Just like there's two ways to do substitution um, when you guys have a polynomial equation, there's also two ways that you guys can divide. You don't have to divide traditionally given that what you're dividing by is this expression with an x term and just a constant, and the coefficient has to be 1. So we can use synthetic substitution to do that example from number 1 in your notes. So if we still, we would still set it up the same way. So when you're trying to fill the inside of your box, you still pull those coefficients out from the front of your variable. So you would pull the 1, the 5, the negative 7, and the 2. It goes 3, 2, 1, constant. But what happens here is that if we're dividing by x minus 2, that's the expression. So the actual x value that we're dividing by is positive 2. So that's what you guys have to be careful of when you guys set this up. Yes, x minus 2, negative 2 is the factor or the expression. The actual x value is positive 2. But everything else is still the same. So we would go through the same process, which you guys already know how to do. So we bring down the first number and then multiply and add. 2 times 7 is 14. Add 2 times 7 again is 14. And then 2 plus 14 is 16. So before, we would have just said that at the x value of 2, our polynomial equals or our y value equals 16. Well, now, this number here, this 16, is now going to be your remainder. And everything after it is a placeholder, just like that first number is a placeholder, it's the remainder. Your 7 is your constant. The next value is your x. And the next value is x squared. If you had more values, it would just continue on. Then the next value would be x cubed. So that last value is your remainder. So when you divide, you get the same thing that you should have gotten the first time we did this. So your x cubed plus 5x squared minus 7x plus 2 divided by x minus 2 gives you x squared plus 7x plus 7 plus our remainder of 16 over x minus 2. So the steps are still the same. Process as substitution, but now we can use it for division. So this only works if you have an x with a coefficient of 1 and then plus or minus some number. So you can't divide using synthetic division if it's 3x plus 2 or 5x plus 1. It has to be 1x plus or minus some number. That's the only way that you can use the synthetic division. So we sort of just hope that we get that expression to divide by so we can use the easier way of doing it synthetically. And that's all your remainder theorem is saying too. So I just told you that that last place value is the remainder and that's what this is saying too. So when you have a polynomial f of x and it's divided by x minus or plus a number then the remainder is r equals f of k. So that's just telling you that the remainder also equal to that value that you plugged in, they're both the same thing. So you can evaluate at that value for your function, but it's also your remainder if you're dividing by that value. So why don't you guys go ahead and try number four there, which is just another synthetic division, so just set it up the same way we just did that first example. Your second theorem here is the factor theorem. Um, so if we divide by some factor, so like we just divided by x plus 3 and we divided by x minus 2. If you guys divide by whatever that value is and you get a remainder, 
of zero, then that's telling you the expression you just divided by is a factor. It's like saying 15 divided by 3 gives you 5, no remainder, because 3 and 5 are both factors of 15. If you tried to divide 15 by 6, you would get 2 remainder of 3. So 6 is not a factor of 15. So you know that when you're dividing, if you end up with no remainder, that means the expression you have is a factor that multiplies evenly into your polynomial. So the goal here, if we're trying to use division to factor a polynomial, then you want to end up with 0 as the remainder. That is the goal here. So let's try and do number 5. So I'm going to set it up, and it looks like we have our cubed, squared, linear, and our constant. So we're not missing anything. We just need to fill in our box. And remember, x plus 2 is our factor, so x actually equals negative 2. You can always plug it or set it equal to 0 to solve for it. So that's what we're going to actually divide by, the x value, given the factor of x plus 2. So we bring down the 3. 3 times negative 2 is negative 6. We add, get negative 10, gives you 20, add, gets you negative 8. And negative 2 times negative 8 is positive 16, so we do get a remainder of 0. I don't ever write it. I just leave it blank saying, good to go. We have no remainder. Great. So negative 8 would be our constant. So remember, this spot is your remainder. You don't want a remainder if you're factoring. Then we have negative 8 to be our constant. 10 will be our x, and 3 will be our x squared. So if we're trying to factor this expression, so you guys know how to factor a squared function. You don't know how to factor necessarily a cubed or a fourth or a fifth degree polynomial, unless you can maybe use grouping if it had four terms. But you can't always use those methods. Those are just possibilities. So what happens when we divide, we start as a cubed function, but when we divide by that expression, x plus 2, it takes it down one degree, and now we're at an x squared. So now because it's an x squared function, you guys can factor what's left. So because we just did that division and ended up with 0 as a remainder, we can confidently say x plus 2 is a factor of this polynomial expression. When we divided, we got we're left with 3x squared minus 10x minus 8. So when we pull out that x, because if you did x times x squared, it would get you back to the x cubed that you started with, we can factor the 3x squared minus 10x minus 8. So just keep that x plus 2. The only thing that multiplies to get us 3 is 3 and 1, so 3x and 1x. Multiplies to get us 8, 2, and 4. So if I'm trying to add up to negative 10, 3 times negative 4 would give us negative 12, plus 2 times x gives us 2. So negative 12 plus 2 gives you 10. So that would be factored. So x plus 2, 3x plus 2, and x minus 4 are all factors of this polynomial. If you multiply them all back together, you should come back to what you started with, 3x cubed minus 4x squared minus 28x minus 16. So you have to find, you have to factor out that first expression and divide by that first to get it down to a squared polynomial, which you guys know how to work with, because that's what you're you know how to factor no matter what, as long as it is factorable. But you have to get it down to that x squared by pulling or dividing by it one expression first. So go ahead and try number six, and I am going to do number seven. 
So number seven gives you one zero. It says f of x equals x cubed minus 2x squared plus minus 23x plus 60, and x equals 3 is a 0. So this is the actual x value. That's not a factor. It's telling you x equals 3. So we're going to divide by 3 and then factor what's left to solve for another 0 of your function. Remember, 0, root, solution, they all mean solve for x. So 1 is in front of your x cubed, negative 2 is in front of your x squared, negative 23 is in front of your x, and 60 is your constant. Bring down the 1, 3 times 1 is 3. Add, you get 1, 3 times 1 is 3. Get negative 20, and 3 times negative 20 is negative 60, so we do get a remainder of 0, so that is good. So remember, negative 20 is your constant. And then we have x squared and x. So if we're trying to solve, remember, we can set f of x or y as 0 and then just factor this. So what multiplies to get you negative 20, but adds to get you 1, x plus 5, and x minus 4. So when you actually set those factors equal to 0, you get x to be negative 5 and x to be positive 4. So when it asks for a second solution or another 0 of f, we can say it is negative 5. Positive 4 is not only there, that's okay, it didn't ask for both, it just asked for another. So again, the reason we factor, guys, is to find solutions. Factoring is one way to solve a quadratic equation or a polynomial. It's just that sometimes it's not always factorable, but if it is, that is one way to solve it. So we like to be able to factor it because that's the easiest way. So factor it, set them equal to zero, and then you can find your values for what x equals.